Hi, I'm Liz with Liz's Crafts, and today I'm going to bring you two new ideas for using pill bottles in DIYs. So for the first one, we're going to make napkin rings. So what I have are these prescription bottles, and I have taken a serrated edge knife and cut the top part off, and that's where the lid screws on. And we're right now we're just going to use that top part for this craft. We will use the pill bottles later. So I'm just going to take my finger sander here and sand the top and the bottom part where it was cut. And then as soon as we get that smooth, we can start adding our twine to it or jute. So this is just some jute twine from the Dollar Tree. It's a red and tan. And we're going to measure it out. So my board here is 24 inches. So I'm going to do three 24 inches and then one 12 inch. So 24, 24, 24, and then 12 inch. And that's the length of my cord. I'm going to cut that. And then I'm going to hot glue it to the inside portion of the pill top, pill bottle top. And then we're just going to start wrapping this around. until we get the whole thing completely wrapped. And there I am pulling it the wrong way. So this is a red and tan jute cord from the Dollar Tree. And I got this last year. I don't know if they have it this year or not. They might. And you want to keep the cord close together on itself. And now we have it all wrapped and we're down to the last couple wraps here. So once we get the whole thing covered, we're just going to cut that down. And then we're going to put some hot glue on that the end of that and then we're going to glue it to the inside now this jute is pretty hairy so we want to clean that up a bit and you want to be careful so you don't burn yourself or burn the uh, jute catch it on fire so I'm just burning off the hairs like I said, be careful that you don't burn yourself. And it does darken it up a little bit, which I like. But it does clean up the hairs quite a bit. It just makes it look a little better. So do the whole thing, the inside, the outside, all of it. And once I have that burnt, then I'm going to add a shell to it. Now, these are probably shells that I've just picked up on the beach. You can also get these little shells from the Dollar Tree. Now, I'm just going to put hot glue on the top and the bottom of the uh, shell just along the edge there. I'm not going to do the sides because it would be hard to handle. 
And that's all there is to this. Now you have yourself a little napkin ring. Now these are a little bit smaller than regular napkin rings you would buy at the store, but they still work very well. So this is a full size cotton napkin. And I'm just gonna put it through the ring, show you what it looks like. What do you think? Is this something you might want to try with your pill bottles? I know we all probably have a ton of them. There it is. And now I have this blue and tan jute again from the Dollar Tree. So I'm going to do a 324 inch lengths. Well, it's all one length, so 24, 24, 24, and 12. And then cut that off. And again, we're going to do the exact same thing. Going to hot glue it to the inside of the ring. And then we're just going to wrap, 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 wrap until the whole thing is wrapped. doesn't take very long and these are not the the skinny pill bottles it is a prescription pill bottle but it's the softer plastic So it is pretty easy to cut the rim of it off using a um, serrated edge knife and a cutting board. So I cut off eight of these. So I'm making eight uh, napkin rings. But you can make however many you want. There's what it's looking like. And now I have all but two wraps done. Or is it three? Maybe three wraps. No, nope, two wraps. So I'm just going to trim that off and then we will hot glue the end to the inside. And then once we get that done, we will burn off the hairs because they're everywhere. Pretty fuzzy. It's, it's pretty fuzzy. It does darken the jute a little bit, but like I say, I kind of like that. Do you want to get the inside and the outside of the ring? Once you get that done, you're going to get your uh, seashell. And you're going to put some glue on the top and the bottom. And you don't need glue on the sides. So just a little bit on the top, a little bit on the bottom. Just put it right there on the outside of the ring. And there you have another napkin ring, this one in blue. So I uh, did, am making four blue and four red. And there it is on the napkin. What do you guys think? Is this something you're gonna try with pill bottles? I just think it's something different to do with them. I have a ton of them and uh, I didn't want to throw them out. So I wanted to think of some crafts to do with them. So when I had cut those tops off, I thought, you know what? These might make good napkin rings and I believe they do. So there's three of the blue, three of the red, and then you see those other two rings there. I make another red one and another blue one. So I get four of each. 
and you'll see that in the final picture coming up in a few seconds. And there it is, four red, four blue, with the seashells and her napkins. And now we're gonna make a hanging vase with the bottles themselves. So I'm gonna glue these bottles end to end where I've cut off the, um, the screw on part, the, where the lid screws on. And I'm lining up the seams. So the openings are being glued to each other. And we have eight pill bottles. We're going to do four sets of two. There's where the seam is. So we're just lining up the seam. I mean, it doesn't really matter. I'm just being particular. So there we have our four sets of two, and now we're going to glue these together. And I do put the glue on the seam line, and then I glue the other bottle's seam line to this one. It just kind of helps you line it up correctly. And then you want to make sure that they're even now that you have four together on the top and the bottom. So you're going to do two sets of these, two sets of four. And then once you have those two sets, then you're going to glue the two sets together. Same thing, lining up the seam, putting the glue on the seam, and then just gluing them together. And then making sure the tops and the bottoms are even and flat. Okay, now we have some uh, paper towel. Now you can use toilet paper for this or you can use napkins and I'm just tearing it in pieces And now I'm gonna take my homemade Mod Podge. And if you don't know how to make your own Mod Podge, let me tell you, it's very simple. You just take some Elmer's glue, and it could be school glue or all-purpose glue. You put a cup in something, and then you put add a fourth a cup of water, mix it together, and you got matte Mod Podge. Just like the matte Mod Podge you buy at the store, only a ton cheaper. So quit wasting your money on Mod Podge that you buy at the store. Make your own. And so we're just putting the paper towel onto the bottles after we put the Mod Podge on. And then I'm putting the Mod Podge on top of the paper towels. You know, I, I kind of did take the, um, the edge of the paper towel where it's straight across and put it in, the, in between the bottles. I just thought it would go a little bit better that way. And then just kind of pushing it down with my um, paintbrush.
So you kind of have to do this project in stages because it has to dry before you move on to the next stage. So the, the one stage here is adding the uh, paper towel with the Mod Podge onto the bottles. And you want to do one side first, let it dry, and then you can move on to the next side after it's dried. So it, it takes a couple of days. Let's say really probably three days to finish the whole project. So you do want to put your paper towel and Mod Podge uh, all over the, the peel bottles, the sides, the front, the back, the whole thing. So there we have one side done. Now we want to let it dry. Okay, I'm sorry, we're still adding a few on there. Okay, now we're going to let this dry. And I went ahead um, off camera and finished the rest of it. And now we're going to use Plaster of Paris. So I have um, the paper towel all over the pill bottles, the front, the back, the sides, the top, the bottom. And I'm just mixing my... Um, Plaster of Paris with some water. Now it said two parts Plaster of Paris to one part water, but I needed mine thicker than that, so I added more Plaster of Paris. I wanted mine pretty thick, and the other way was pretty runny. So now that I have it the consistency I want, and see there's the paper towel all over the bottles, then I'm just going to kind of spoon it out on there. So this is just a stick, or stick, a paint stir stick or something like that that I'm using with the Plaster of Paris. And I have a big bag of the Plaster of Paris. And then I'm just gonna use my fingers to kind of smooth it out. And I like the ridges that my fingers leave. And I wanna make sure there's a ridge in between the bottles uh, lengthwise. It is a little messy, but not too bad. Now, I thought at first that um, I would like the indentations between the bottles uh, horizontally, but um, I end up putting some more plaster in there and smoothing that out because I didn't like it as much. You can still see it somewhat, but not, not as much as you can right now. So I use a couple fingers at a time to drag it down and I like the, um, the design it leaves, the ridges.
So I just keep smoothing it until it's the way I like it and try to use up all my plaster that I uh, mixed up. Now when you go to clean this up, you don't want to do it in your sink. I took mine outside to the spigot and uh, let the debris from my container go on the ground. I think it would probably clog up your um, plumbing if you kept cleaning it up in the sink. Have you ever used Plaster of Paris? If so, let me know in the comments and how did you like it? I mean, I think it's pretty easy to work with. When you clean up your uh, containers and stuff, you need to do it right away, though. Because it dries pretty quickly in your container. And then it's a lot harder to get it out. And that's about it for that. And now it is pretty much dried. You can see where it's still a little damp. And we're going to flip it over and do the other side. Now I have let this dry for a couple of hours. And I have this regular piece of jute that I'm going to hot glue on the back side of this between the first and second bottles to make a hanger. So I'm putting the jute all the way up and down the bottle, so the whole length of it. And then I have this um, little tool that I'm using to push it down in the crevice there. It's just a makeup tool from the Dollar Tree. And then we're going to go ahead and do the other side. But you want to leave enough uh, hanger at the top so that... Uh, it's going to hang correctly. So I don't take this piece all the way down to the bottom because I needed a little more of the hanger at the top. And I am pushing it down in the crevice like I did the other one. And then you want this to dry before you start working with your plaster of Paris. And now I've mixed up some more Plaster of Paris and I'm just going to put it on my bottles just like I did for the other side. And 
And I'm just going to use my fingers on it, just like the other side. And do you see on my left hand there that's not moving? On my ring finger, um, my pointer finger, I have plaster of Paris on that. That's important for later, and I'll let you know why in a little bit. I'm just doing the same thing, taking my um, first two fingers, my uh, pointer finger and my middle finger, and uh, going down the length of this, just making um, kind of line with my two fingers there. I like how this looks. You could do any other design that you would want. So you want to make sure that you cover everything with the plaster of Paris, everything on this side. Because when we get done with this side and it dries, then we have to do the bottom and the top. And you want the whole thing covered with the plaster of Paris. So you want to make sure that you get the, where the two sides meet. This is actually the back of this. So just making ridges with my fingers, making sure the two sides meet the plaster and we're gonna let that dry now you notice I have a band-aid on that finger I was telling you about I slammed it in the door. Oh my goodness. Did it hurt? Oh wow. I didn't say anything bad though. I really didn't. I was surprised, but it hurt. It hurt bad. It took a hunk of meat out of my finger. It really did. So again, I've mixed up some more of the plaster of Paris and I'm adding it to the bottom of our piece there. Do you know what this is going to be? If you know, or if you think you know, put it in the comments. And hopefully you haven't seen the picture of it yet. So since I didn't need a lot of the plaster of Paris, I just mixed it up in this little bowl and used this little spoon to do it with. I didn't need the big, the big uh, container that we had used earlier. But again, I do wash everything outside from the spigot 
so that I don't clog up my sink. Just using my finger to kind of uh, rub this around. Just want to make sure that all your um, bottles and stuff are covered with the plaster of Paris. So this is kind of going to, well, it kind of looks like wood. But if you left it white or whatever, it would kind of look like uh, concrete maybe. So we're just going to let that dry after I work on it a little bit more. And then when it dries, then we'll do the top. Now, if you need to smooth this out more, you can add some water to your finger and then just use your finger and smooth it out. So here's where I dip my finger in some water. And now that the bottom is pretty well dry, we're going to work on the top. Now, like I said, each drying time is, is a, a couple hours. So when you go to make this, you want to give yourself two to three days. So if you hear things in the background, that's my granddaughter singing a song. Monkey's jumping on the bed. And then my kitty opened the door so you could hear that. I mean, you know, I'm trying to do a voiceover here, people. But we must go on. So I'm just doing the top like I did the bottom and spooning out the plaster of Paris on the top of the bottles here. And since we put the bottles the way we did, um, you'll see in a little bit how that is helpful. And I am kind of proud of myself because every time I mixed up some plaster of Paris, I used it all. So with me, that probably wouldn't happen very often, but I was proud of myself. So again, I'm just taking my fingers and uh, smoothing it down, not all the way, but a little bit. And then if I've missed any spots, especially around the uh, hanger there, then I just add a little more plaster of Paris to it. Just going around and checking the uh, edges to make sure there's enough plaster of Paris. Now 
Notice I have my band-aid off. But, uh, yeah, my finger's pretty chewed up. I mean, I slammed it in the door and I took a piece of meat out of it. <sighs> She's got to be careful. Got to be smarter than the door. Evidently, I wasn't. Now you want to let this dry for a couple hours. Now, I actually let that dry overnight, and I'm taking my drill and drill bit here, and I am drilling the holes down in through the tops. Now, you have your bottle bottoms here, and so it goes, the drill bit goes through the uh, plaster of Paris pretty easily, and then it takes a little bit longer to go through the bottle. But you want to do a hole in each of the bottles. And so actually it will go all the way from the top to the bottom because of the way we glued the bottles together. And then we'll sh you'll see how we use those later on. We're going to go ahead and paint this. So I have this chalk paint that I got from Pop Shelf and it's from folk art and I'm just gonna paint this um, it's pretty close to the plaster of Paris color you probably could skip this part but um, I thought that I probably need a layer of the chalk paint on here before I go on to the next step I don't know if it's critical or not but I decided to go ahead and do it So I go, go over the whole thing with this chalk paint, top, bottom, sides, front, back. And now I'm going to use my Waverly, um, what is it called, wax, dark wax. I don't know if you have cats or not, but they hate closed doors. So I am in like an office area, one of the bedrooms we have set up like an office and I'm just trying to do my voiceover. Well, the door doesn't click all the way shut and my kitty just can't stand it. He keeps opening the door. I mean, really? Can you just leave me alone for a few minutes? Just like kids. So I'm just taking the Waverly Wax and I'm putting it on the bottom of our piece right now with a sponge dauber and then I'm going to wipe it with a paper towel. And I just love how this turns out. You get that wax in all the nooks and crannies and it just looks so good. So there's the bottom and we're going to dry it. So I'm just using my uh, heat gun. And now we're going to go with one of the uh, fronts or backs. I don't know what it is, which piece it is. So I'm just sponge daubing the uh, wax on here. So I do like a section at a time. because I didn't want part of it to be darker than the other part. And 
And when you daub it, it kind of gets it down in those nooks and crannies. Okay, so I'm just going to wipe it with my paper towel there. Ooh, I love it. Kind of makes it look like wood a little bit. I like how it's darker there in spots. And then I kind of quit daubing it and just started, uh, you know, streaking it kind of like a paintbrush or whatever. And then kind of daubed the areas that didn't get uh, the wax in it. And then just wipe it in with my uh, paper towel there. And I really like how this turned out. Just going to dry this with my heat gun. It doesn't take much because it's pretty thin on there. Now we're going to flip it over to the other side. You see, I'm just kind of using it like a paintbrush. And it does kind of foam up a little bit, the uh, wax does, but that's okay. You can still use it. It's not a problem. It's just because you're using a foam brush. Then again, I'm going to wipe it down with the paper towel. I'm loving it. Loving it. Looking good. There's always a little extra in your foam brush in there. You can uh, just kind of use the side of it to put it on your uh, item that you're putting the wax on. I thought I might not have to um, water down some more wax, but I do end up doing it. Those little foam brushes, once you dip them in it, they hold quite a bit. Like when you go to wash them out, you'll just keep washing and washing and washing and washing. Now we're going to uh, dry it with our heat gun. And now we're going to do the top, which is the last part. And then we get to decorate.
So I'm just using the leftover uh, wax that's in my foam end there. But I do end up having to mix up a little bit more. I thought it could make it, but not quite. That was close, though. That was close. Do you see how close I was? Man, I was close. Just didn't make it. So I just put a little bit of water in there, get a little bit of the wax on my um, foam dauber, just mix that up, and finish this up. Just trying to get the wax kind of down in the hole there so you don't see a lot of white. Just daubing some spots that I thought needed a little bit more wax to it. And I'm going to wipe it with my um, paper towel. Then I'm going to use my heat gun to dry it. Touch up some spots here and there. Because this is just about the last of what we need to do to this until we get to decorating. So. I got this piece of greenery from the Dollar Tree. It was in the uh, Shore Living section. Actually, no, it wasn't. It was where they have their uh, flowers and stuff. And this piece was in there too. I think it's cute. And the two together, I think they go together very well. And as you can see, I'm not cutting down the pieces at all. I'm just pushing them down in the hole and they go all the way to the bottom, I think. And this is it. We are done. This is complete. This was a long time coming, wasn't it? So this is basically a hanging vase. Well, of course, you know, I asked y'all to put in the comments what you thought it was, but boy I'm not very bright because I told you what it was you didn't see it but I told you there it is hanging on my wall and I just love it love it love it love it what do you think of it so there's both of them the um, napkin rings and my hanging vase and again I'm Liz with Liz's crafts and uh if you like what you see, please give me a thumbs up. And if you know anyone that might like my crafts, please feel free to share my videos with them. And if you're a subscriber, thank you so much. And if you just watch my videos, thank you so much. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, uh, you might want to think about subscribing. And I'll see you later.